welcome back to another episode of Tam Tonight. I'm your host, Tam. Yeah. And today, we have the great and the talented Ori Michelle! Hi! Hello, hello, hello. One of my favorite people on TikTok. Oh. I found her because of, I feel like, how everybody that would watch this found her from her covers, mashups of like classic songs and I feel like everybody's favorite is the international players anthem. Ooh. I choose you. She yes. really, really ate it and we're gonna put it in, crop it in, and then we'll come back. Bye <laughs> Michelle. Yes. So you've been doing music, but how did like TikTok affect everything that you had going on? TikTok definitely has helped a lot when it comes to just my musicianship. I've been able to connect with a wider span of just people from all over the country and the world. I think that it also gave me a larger reach because that International Players Anthem video, it went, it kind of did go a little viral, yes. you know? Um, uh, Pimp C's wife, Miss Janara Butler, she reposted the video and she reached out to me and she was like, you have to be on my next project. She oh. said, keep going. You don't understand how much you're impacting people. Mm-hmm. And it's so crazy because this past weekend, I met Big Boy. I saw him. Oh so my happy. gosh. And literally, like, the whole situation was crazy. So, like, we were going to go get, like, I hopped at, like, almost two in the morning and we were walking out the hotel and walking into the hotel was big boy and I almost lost my stuff but my my roommate she was my roommate in college all four years she's one of my best friends she was like I was asking her I was like, should I go up to him should I say something she said it's Friday night we are having a great time and I could use a little bit more excitement she <laughs> walks up to him she says yeah. hi great show I have somebody that I would like for you to meet and I was just like oh my gosh like I'm melting on the inside so then I'm like hi you know my name is Ari I went to school for music here at Hampton and I have some people who wanted to get your attention on one of the flips that I did for one of your songs and I played him like not even five seconds of international players and he was like no I heard this before he was like you went crazy he was like this is hard and I was like so TikTok definitely helped like increase my reach mm-hmm. and it allowed for me to find my niche too when it comes to the sort of content that I do want to post online. I'm super grateful for, you know, just everybody. I gained over like 8,000 followers yeah. when it came to me just, you know, posting my flips and my covers and I'm really grateful that I was able to bring everybody into my world and now that I have a, a little bit of a fan base, I would like for people to know more about me as an artist. Yes. Too, so yeah, I'm happy about because I recently saw one of your posts that was saying, um, you're kind of maybe interrupt with your content, and you don't know if you want to still do flips or if yeah. you want to. Because I get it when you get so much attention off of one thing, you don't want to be put in that box like, oh, she's the girl that does this, especially on social media, right? They love a typecast, right? So you have to mix a little bit of Art Michelle in there yes. because you do have good songs, <laughs> AWH. Yeah. It's very dancey and fun. I love the spirit. I'm a fashion girl, so it's all fashion show music. To yes, me. <laughs> that's a dream of mine. I've always wanted my music to play during like fashion shows. I used oh to my play, god, it's perfect for it. Thank you. I used to play a uh, JoJo's fashion show growing up, and I just love the music that was playing like while I was styling the girls and stuff. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I would love for that to be my music one day. Yes. So to create like you know this dance project with my brother Stefan Ringer and Marco Mason and Jeremy it just definitely allowed for me to have fun you know it's a very um authentic EP it's about just you know feeling how you feel and not denying the last song the <laughs> the last song of the EP is titled Deny and you know it was we honestly had the EP already confirmed and that last song tied the whole EP together because it really allowed for me to tap into what the gist of that EP was about. It's titled AWH Ari, what are you doing here? Because it's a dance project, a house project, and you know, I'm everybody knows me for being like an R and B neo soul singer. So when I dropped that project, everybody was like 
Ari, we were not expecting that for <laughs> What are you doing? Ari, what are you doing? <laughs> Literally. And the Nicki Minaj and Ariana Grande situation when she was on live and she had told her, she's like, Ariana, what are you doing here? <laughs> so, like, my friends, when we were all in New Orleans, that they were saying that New Orleans, I don't know why I said New Orleans, <laughs> but um, they were all like, Ari, what are you doing here? Ari, what are you doing here? Just, like, randomly throughout the day. And I was like, I think that's kind of perfect for it. it so, yeah, it's just a chat about, um, it's a project about being just fully who you are, not trying to conform to different sorts of, you know, standards of society, being confident, falling in love, you know, although sometimes we want to be your favorite, we know that what we bring to the table is something that people should also be willing to accept if they accept you for who you are fully. So that's really what it's all about. It's just about just being you, girl. Yes, it is so fun. The cover is beautiful. Thank you. Oh my god. Also, I feel like it is so important for Black women especially to like reclaim more, I don't want to be basic with it, but more so happy music. Yeah. Because for so long, I feel like even our turned up music has been kind of like sad mm -hmm. on the lyrical level like dang why we always going through something yeah why does it gotta be hard or like we only have an like, after through this horrible time oh my gosh why can't we just be happy to yeah you know for no reason why can't we just be i love that though because like you know i never really i never really considered that wow i never it's just clicking to me in that moment but that makes so much sense i think that like you know everybody's always telling me oh my gosh Ari, you're so happy you're so happy da, 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 da. and you know i love that people can feel the happiness in my music because there, come, there was a point in time where you know i believe that art is so you know broad you can say you can talk about your sadness you can talk about your happiness you can talk about everything in between when it comes to art but i feel like naturally i've always wanted people to feel good when they listen to my music i want you to feel you know uplifted i want you to feel inspired or encouraged so in some sort of way although you know i do have my sexy tracks and i do have like air which is more of like a song or a somber song i do feel like majority of my content is happy yeah. so i'm very glad that you know that was something that you you noticed because that is one of my intentions you know mm -hmm. i want you to feel my heart through my art and majority of the time i am a very happy <laughs> <laughs> we love to see it and yes. we yes. so also, I think what's very clever about your title, Ari, what are you doing here, is because you don't typically, that is not your intended genre, right? Oh. You went to a very serious music school. You have a very serious yes. music education. Indeed. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> so, I am a 2020 pandemic grad <laughs> of the illustrious Hampton University. I have a Bachelor of Science in Music Recording Technology, and, you know, within that major, I have a minor in piano and a major in voice so okay. you know classically trained I was soprano one and two section leader for university and concert choir I was also one of the lead vocalists in jazz combo um yeah I was just super musically involved I'm a part of I was actually a solo line spring 18 of Sigma Alpha Iota International Music Fraternity. So, you know, shout out to the Mute Gamma chapter. Uh, yeah, just musically, I've always been in music. Always. I was the, the what is it? the student representative for the music department at my school like my senior junior year so i, I just, this ain't no hobby art really I does it. no <laughs> she does for real in different genres like we were talking off camera you actually got to perform opera yeah in sydney australia yeah for the people you know at the sydney opera house that's their thing opera is their thing it was just a beautiful experience because, you know, I performed with a variety of people from like New Zealand to Japan to wow. Australia, Canada, like South America. We were all from every walk of life. And what I love about music is how universal it is and how it brings everybody together. It's like you don't have to, you know, just be a certain 
race or you know a certain sort of person or even speak the same language exactly Mm -hmm. to enjoy music so I definitely love that about just my experience with music in general is that I get to encounter so many different and beautiful people from all walks of life Mm -hmm. so based off of that we're going to talk about like some of your experiences where music has taken you so far and like recently too because I've been stopping your social media (laughs) Ari and I we had an interview like remotely because I was in California she was here in Georgia she let me come to her house she said I could be the killer listen (laughs) she trusted me on my TikTok I got my securities she does she does though yes but um, you can go left but <laughs> her, i've been talking her on social media and it seems like your music is just take giving you so many opportunities so the first one that i saw was like you got to perform at the braves yes, yes did I you do did. the national anthem or what did you i okay. did yep i performed the national anthem at pride night i think yes it was last year 2022 mm-hmm. in june i'm so happy the braves won <laughs> and i was just like oh my gosh like uh-huh. i can't believe i did that I can't believe I can say that that is a part of my resume. I performed the national anthem at the Braves. And you had the outfit on. Oh, listen, I had to represent. <laughs> <laughs> I had to represent. That was my first time performing um, in a stadium that large yes. by myself, too, my yes. dad. And, you know, when I was um, about to get ready to go onto the field, they were like, how many like earplugs do you need i was like i just need one i didn't understand why they even offered them to me until i was singing and i heard my echo like three seconds later so i was singing but i had to stay on time with what i was hearing in my earplug and i was like oh this is interesting yeah experience but i loved it i really loved it and i would do it again i want to get all the infinity stones and go to like uh perform the national anthem at you know the soccer game okay basketball football i'm trying to do it all because that would be my next question like so are you going to the hawks next like where are we going (laughs) one call is all Ari the show will be there okay (laughs) she will be there her hawks merch police and she will be on there I love that. Yes, I would. I would. Oh, so fun. And then football. Y'all might have the... We already had some football here. Oh, yeah, we did. But I can travel, too. Listen, I did have one opportunity, but it never came into fruition to perform at um, a basketball game for an NBA team. Okay. But, you know, I just know that when the time comes back around, I'll definitely try to shoot for it again. Sure. Because at least I was you know offer the opportunity to so you know it's not far pitched yeah it's out there it's right there it's if i can see it it'll happen it's right there mm-hmm. Absolutely. i also saw that you um got to perform at yandy's restaurant oh my gosh yes i got to perform at yandy's restaurant dancing crepe it was so so fun the energy in that room was top notch like top tier yandy is such a like loving person Aww. like you just talk to her and you feel so warm and like she's just so down to earth it just feels so natural and organic and she's so supportive of all of her artists and she wants like artists in the atlanta scene to come out and to do their thing her and jamelo they have a few events throughout the week that they put on like on wednesdays they have an open mic night for spoken word and for neo soul and it's just super nice it's super such a vibe and then on Sundays for her brunch that's when they'll have their showcase so super grateful to be a part of the showcase I performed my single on top of the world and everybody was in there my Cadillac and I was like yeah y'all better see is that the one you have a video for yes it was so cute yes this is giving me Jill Scott vibes early 2000s that real soul music video oh you're talking about my music video oh my gosh that one so I have the one called Summer Love, which is definitely like me also. Oh my gosh, that I, <laughs> I shot that throughout the pandemic and like it was we were safe of course. It was outside and my friends and I like it was before we knew it was drastic. Like it was early, like when they just told us to go home. <laughs> and before they were like, no, this you is can't around nobody. Yeah, for real, for real. Before we started quarantining in the crib. So um 
I recorded that. Oh my gosh, I was in my senior year of college, so I did Summer Love. And then I just dropped a recent music video, I Choose Me. Yes. Which, that's probably the one that's that that's definitely kind of Jill Scott now that I think yeah. about it. <laughs> it was an impromptu video. We recorded it. Um, my friend Kieran Blaze, he, uh, we met up for the first time. We were just doing like a meeting. And he was like, do you want to shoot a music video? And I was like... Uh, I'm not prepared. <laughs> I'm not really prepared for a music video, but we can go ahead and shoot a little something, something. I was like, with the outfit I had on, I had on like all red, and I was like, okay, I'm really organic and natural yeah. right now. Let me, which song should I do? I choose me. And so we just sat there and we had such a great time. Who is it? <laughs> yes. but that video was so cute and it did feel very organic that's why I was saying it really took me back to like early 2000s mm -hmm. like you know so we're going to make a video about their regular life for real everybody with her house yes. just outside the park yes. like, that's the vibe. we need that though yes. we need that I think that we don't always have to and that's something I learned with shooting the videos that you don't always have to be so elaborate yes. with you know your video sometimes it is just as simple as boom you know I'm outside drinking some coffee you know reflecting about my day with a nice mural in the back you know yes. <laughs> I feel like because of social media everything has become so overproduced like even Absolutely. the smallest thing when I see people family activities become a whole production right and it's like okay I get that for like aesthetic reasons or whatever memories but I think it does take away from like the realistic element mm, people yes. have such unrealistic expectations yes. now situations and things because they're seeing so much overproduced perfectly crafted yeah like to where people don't even want to go out on a regular date no more uh, you spend a thousand dollars or it's like <laughs> <laughs> that cheesecake factory situation oh my gosh i'm like for real y'all i'm like what if you live in the suburbs like cheesecake factory and the top restaurants all you got that is and honestly <laughs> cheesecake factory is not even that bad i'm like that was OD for me personally. I was like, I understand if it was Waffle House or something, uh, but it's legit cheesecake factory. My only thing is, and look, I always be like, I'm not one of those girls, maybe I got low standards. Just don't take me nowhere that you got a coupon for. <laughs> and we're cool. Like, don't take me nowhere where it's a lot of it's the old people lined up buffet style. <laughs> <laughs> and don't have no coupon that you got cut out. If you got something on your phone or something, you want to slide real quick or you're going to go pay, all right? You know, look, I'm all for a finance. <laughs> so the man has got his money in line. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, look, I'm budgeting out this I'm day. I'm going to appreciate it. I still brought you, I got you whatever you want. Exactly. But I got points at this restaurant. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's cool. For real. But don't come in here with no coupon that you done clipped out. Mm. You know, from your work. You have to yeah. buy two. Yeah. Yeah. We don't get yeah. this one thing. Yeah. I'm not here for it. But y'all be strict on your internet. They That's are. Very stuff. particular. I just know I'm just grateful I don't have to deal with that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Being single seems so stressful. Like anytime I even feel a little bit of anger in my house, I'm like, no. To make this work because outside looks tragic it's very scary out there y'all be turned but that's it yeah it's nothing going on it's very ghetto yes <laughs> in the commentary y'all seem so miserable <laughs> like i just i can't personally go through the heartaches that i've been through again i've been through the tyler perry drama before oh my and god i cannot go through that anymore i'm I sure really it inspired can't. some great music it did because how was i girlfriend number three how did you have a fiance and another girlfriend and a six month old child like how how did you have time for all of this i had to learn that such as a horror way um, when i was younger like oh a man will always have the time girl it oh. don't matter so if you gonna be the whole police you better make sure you got a 24-hour guard on the force and make sure you got backups and all of that because there will always be time i don't know how some of y'all do it double triple life well, he was deployed overseas at the time. Oh, was a so military man. Extra scandalous. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Yeah. But, you know, I, he, instead of 
might have been a gun treaty. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so you're domestic terrorism. Hello. <laughs> but hey, no comment there, you know. Thank y'all for y'all service for real. Okay. I promise you, I have nothing against the military. Oh, but I'm just saying. Like, I love y'all, especially in these dark times. <laughs> it's giving that vibe. We might need y'all. Oh, for so, real. I'm gonna chill out on my Camaro jokes and no, all of that that y'all only go for the challenger. No, he had a joke. The Jaguar. <laughs> See, I feel like y'all only go for the cars and for the and for the living situation, but he moved back and got a brand new Jaguar. And like, I asked, I was like, "What are our plans for Valentine's Day?" And instead of me getting a response back, I got pictures of every single window of his Jaguar busted out. And I was like, "He just bought that car like a weekend or two ago, and now boom!" Oh, so he was getting his car. Back. Uh, yeah, you want to taste some your own medicine. <laughs> <laughs> That's words are queen Let me stop. <laughs> so your new song, you put it out in October. Say my name. Say my name. Yes. Who decided this song? Oh my gosh, the say my name. I wrote this song like two years ago okay. in a studio session with my my dog Brandon Phillips Taylor. And it was so crazy because, like, when he was playing the chords, I said, this sounds like sexy dominatrix, but I'm such a goofy person. So it was, like, sexy. I love writing sexy music, but me personally, I am not, like, the sex symbol. So, <laughs> but that's okay, though, because I know I'm a sex symbol out there to somebody, but I'm just saying, like, I like writing I love writing as a writer. So I was writing a song in like the corner of the studio because I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cringe. I'm writing. Are you like, are you like, everybody get out of here now? For real. <laughs> That's really how I was feeling. Like I was in my corner and I was like singing it and it was like, what you got? I was like, I'm competitive. <laughs> and after a while, I was like, okay, let me sing to y'all the lines. And it was like, whoa, this is hot. And yeah. I was just like, Okay, you know, I'm still melting on the inside because I'm like, people are, they don't, it's not even like that's a side of me, but I just love challenging myself yeah. as a writer. I was like, how can I write like a sexy song that isn't super like vulgar, that's mm -hmm. just like saying this, 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 and this, you know, but giving you a little bit of like creativity to Leave the song. Leave something to imagination, yeah. something we could play in a crowd. Right. Sometimes the sexy music. It makes me feel it. I feel like I'm young, you know, I'm outside. Yeah. It makes you feel a little prudish, like, oh God. And you know, sometimes, like, I want you to be able to say these things and still feel sexy, but not just letting it all hang out. Yeah. That's kind of, like, if I'm going to go sexy, that's how I'm going to go. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it just so happened that, um, you know, I had sent it over to, you know, just be listened to it was a part of like a packet of songs I had sent and you know boom I had got a call and I was like they were like yo you know we really like this song for um it ended up getting placed on power the power book four the fourth series yes, Tommy show so exciting season two episode six so, right yep I was and like, the scene like perfectly went with it when I saw you post it I'm like yeah Oh my gosh, when I watched that scene, it was crazy because it wasn't a lot of dialogue. Mm -hmm. It was, it was, it was your song. song. Yeah. And it was like almost two minutes. It was basically like the full song, mm -hmm. except for like maybe the intro. And I was like, that's me. Yeah. It was so surreal. So I'm just very grateful that, you know, we were able to place that song with art that worked for like television. I thought that was perfect you know because we personally like i don't really know what sort of video i would do for that but for that song to be used on a tv show it was like okay this song was used exactly how it was supposed to be yes. used and i'm so grateful for that yes. so how does it like have you ever heard your song on a radio yet I've heard it on uh um, streaming kind of makes that <laughs> <laughs> you know i've heard my song on well, I heard that my song is playing on the mainstream radios in London. Okay. I was really... That, that, your, that definitely fits their vibe, though. I love that, for real. I have yes. to go to London now because mm -hmm. for me to hear that my music is being played on the radios in London, like, I have to go see what it's all about. Now. I'm going to send you a link, but you should... T you, do you like Mahalia? You know, Mahalia? Yeah. You should totally go to Mahalia Presents. Yeah. I would love that. Yeah. 
in London? Yes, she puts on like a showcase for what? her artists. Oh my god! So, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, I'm gonna do that because I, I'm, I'm gonna do the solo yes. one too. So, yes. love this. But um, yes, yeah, so London has played my music. I know on um, a radio series, Mags FM, they have also played my music. And then I do believe that one sort of sector of Soho has played my music on one of their playlists before. Okay. So, you know, I've been on a few playlists. I'm not exact. I personally haven't heard it on, like, the radio station. Like, now we are tuning in to Ari Lachelle, but I have been on a JPRG radio. It's an online radio okay. station. So, shout out to Charisma and mm-hmm. Liana for that. I definitely agree. I'm just trying to, like, compare your feeling of, like, maybe hearing your song in a car or something and then seeing it on TV. Man. How that, because like the art with your song probably gives you a different feeling yeah. of just hearing your song. It does. Like they're both surreal feelings mm-hmm. because like even earlier, like off camera when you were playing my song, I was like, that is my song. Like <laughs> sometimes I it even amazes me. I don't know if I'm getting imposter syndrome, but I'm like, that's really my music. Like that's, I sang that. Like yes. I wrote those lyrics, you know? So it's it's just surreal to me that I hear my music and my art in these different places and avenues. Like I never would have expected for everything to go how it has. I've just been keeping my head down and keeping at it and to see everything come into fruition. It's like, wow, like God's been showing out because I personally haven't pictured these things. I've just allowed for the journey to go the way that it's supposed to go okay yeah. so you're not and this is what i try to tell i'm very close to my younger brother he's 10 years younger than me uh-huh. and i try to tell him all the time like don't be married to your ideas yeah. of things or like how they're supposed to turn out or exactly how they need to go because that'll get in your way more than it'll help you <sighs> they yeah. certain people might put it out like oh you're manifesting so you have this specific vision board every single thing you want all of that you might be blocking something that's better for you for sure so you have to like of course, be diligent. Of course, work hard. Like you say, keep your head down, focus, but also leave room. I feel like it's so hard for that little bit of control I know. when you leave room. Because yeah, maybe you just want to be an artist. You never thought, oh, I'll do good, have my music on shows or right. You're like, I'll go on tour. People will just like my songs. Not right. that they'll know it from you know a show that they love or something like that. Absolutely, and I think that also when people talk to you about artistry, they only talk to you about the performing aspect. So, you know, going into those things, you think that is one of your only options, but you have other options than touring. You can, you can be a studio artist. You know, you can put have sync licensing. Like you can get placements on TV shows and you know movies and stuff like that. I think that sometimes we limit our art industry when you know like you said there's so many more avenues out there don't be married to just one idea because you might get to that point but you have to be open to there being other things along the way that help you to get to that point so that's really what I'm looking at it as like you know one day I will go on tour but I think that if I'm getting more exposure now through tv shows and through movies and television and stuff like that I'll do that until one time it is the time is right for me to go on a tour or mm-hmm. to open up for someone on a tour and you can't yes. even anybody's out there listening. Yeah, so this is the perfect segue. I always ask everybody that comes on the show, if you could go on tour with any three artists, yes. who would you choose? Oh man. I'm not gonna lie, I've been super obsessed with Victoria Monet lately. Mm-hmm. Love her so much. Anderson Puck, uh like Silk Sonic. Yeah. Um dang. That third one is hard because it could be, it would be like a lot of people. <laughs> I would love to go on tour with Alex Eisen. Oh, that would be amazing. I would love that. I feel like your music would mesh very well with her. <sighs> yes. I Even like that. your dancey, happy stuff. Like, Because I've seen Alex live. Yeah. So I feel like it could go. You could turn us up a little bit and you could do your more mellow stuff to lead it to her. Yeah, I would love that. And I feel like you guys have like the same sort of fan base. Yes, I really agree. Victoria too, because I wasn't expecting. Um, you know, her music is a little bit more. It's similar to so Sonic and stuff in that way, like right. kind of how old school, funky, funky yep. yeah, but still very new and fresh. I was not expecting her to have a more mellowed out opener. She had Tanner open for her. Mm. 
mm-hmm. and her music is like very moody mm-hmm. and like heavy and, mm-hmm. and sexy. She goes out there like a goddess. Love that. So I'm like, yeah, all right, Michelle, you can open the door and all that. I got the show, show. And you got the soul and you got the dance music too. Yes, and yeah. I'm going to be like Channel Trey when I perform live. I'm going to have some dancers because mm-hmm. personally, I feel like dancing I can do a little choreo, but I am not a dancer, so I gotta have my dancers out there because they're such an important element yes. to a live performance. And I'm glad people have been talking about that more. Like specifically, I've been seeing Offset talk a lot about it um, in regards to rap, saying mm-hmm. oh, rap is kind of people are saying it's falling off and stuff because they don't bring everything to the performance. They're kind of chilling up, mm-hmm. they be walking around, smoking, <laughs> drinking, acting like they didn't want to come. <laughs> you know, they got the background track on. Ooh. So when you do put more into your show, mm-hmm. like okay, you don't want to dance. That's fine, but have some people up here to engage yeah. and like do a little something. Have some costume changes. Right. Do what you can do right. to entertain us because we're still here to be entertained. If we just wanted to hear a song, we can do that at home. One hundred percent. We can't see you. I love the um, live element of performing because mm-hmm. I'm. I love intimate settings when I perform, but I'm also like, my dad is a comedian, so okay. So it's very, I've always kind of added an element of comedy to my shows. I'm such a goofball, and I feel like I'm so just like authentic in my goofiness. Like, if there's something that happens on stage, I'm just talking about it, or like, sometimes I might take my heels off because my feet hurt, and okay. I'm going to enjoy the <laughs> show. <laughs> So I'm just so real when it comes to my show. I always try to make it like engaging and so like yo, I'm I'm just like everybody on who's watching me. You know, I I have I'm not perfect. I I love to sing. I love to you know perform. But at the same time, I want it to be interactive. Like I really want to connect with my audience because it changes depending on who you're performing in front of. So I want to tailor my performance to that audience. Okay, that's fun. So like if you were doing a festival, it would be more so like your AWH stuff. It would yes. be fun. Maybe you could go all out. And then if it was your opening for, let's say, Eric Badu, you would be doing your neo solo. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, you can you have something. I'm versatile, baby. Yeah. Everybody always wants to put somebody in like a particular box, but at the end of the day, no person is one dimensional. Yes. And I think that's so unfair for people to subscribe, like to have you subscribe to one certain thing when you know that there's so many different elements of you as a person, elements of you musically. You don't just listen to one genre of music. Yes. Why is it that an artist can only do one genre of music? I've never understood that, and maybe because I do have like an eclectic taste of music. But yeah, I'm listening to all different kinds of things. So why do I want Ari to only make this kind of music? Exactly. What if she's good at several different? I want to hear whatever she's good at. Let her try it. Yeah, you know. And if it doesn't work, I'm gonna learn from that. Mm-hmm. But at least allow me the opportunity to do that to see, you know, yeah. to see what happens if I drop a dance project, to see what happens if I drop a R&B project or a jazz project, like you know, just whatever. I want to have that opportunity to do that without being shunned. Yes. I, that's so unfair or to the like artists. how executives will make it seem, or you're going to alienate your audience if you try this thing. Mm-hmm. They're not going to like you anymore. Right. Why? I'm still singing. Like, I'm still, I'm still me. It's still the same personality. Yes. A lot of people say, you know, you have to build in one area and then you're able to do the other things but I feel like if you can build simultaneously in multiple areas why not why not like you said there's different spaces for different things so if I'm performing at a festival that has more of like dance music I'll perform my dance music I'm not going to be up there performing and say my name Mm -hmm. in front of an audience with that's you know like EDM crowd yeah Mm -hmm. absolutely I feel like Everybody can get a little bit from me. And if my whole body of work inspires you in some sort of way, absolutely incredible. But if I have one piece of work that you love so much, I love that also. I really love that you can connect to something of mine because all of it is true to who I am and my artistry. So I can appreciate you enjoying one single or you enjoying the whole project, you know? Okay, so speaking of genres in your flexibility yes. and your classical training, which I feel like is very important because you have <laughs> a lot of like your musical ability. 
to me. Yeah. Who are your ideal people to get features or do a feature with if you could pick three? Oh my gosh. If I could get three, Outcast, if y'all hear me, Outcast. Outcast, you mean Outcast, Big Boy, and Andre? Both of them. I need both, both of them. Okay. I I mean, that. <laughs> please, I would love for Outcast to, you know, I would love to collab with, with them personally. Mm -hmm. um, so, Outcast. Um, I have so many artists. Who would I, who else would I want to feature from? I have so many artists I could choose that I'm trying to be, you know, trying not to be the same artist that yeah. I would want to tour with. Those people, of course. of course. And then, of course, you know, Erica Badu or Jill Scott. Like, that would be amazing. I know that's three, but I kind of want to put them in, like, the same. Yeah, they're going to get that. <laughs> and then, um... Somebody out the box that people would be like, what? Smino. Okay, Smino Grigio. I love Smino Grigio. I love Smino. I, I love Sad Tate. That good old homie we always think up. Yeah. <laughs> I love him so much and I feel like, you know, we would create something super special yes. together. For sure. Maybe I can stalk Smino for you. I feel like he'd be in LA and I've seen him at shows before. What? Also, there's a party called Face to Face um, put on by this girl called Cloud Nine. Shout out to Cloud Nine. Mm -hmm. uh, she's also a photographer. And Smino was there and he was like this far from me. He was smoking. He had on his beanie on the whole thing. And I'm like, maybe I can talk to him. Like inside, I'm fighting eternal demons. Ah, that was me. It's a little bit late in the evening. I had a couple of drinks. <laughs> I feel good. I know I look cute. I'm not taking my friend with my phone. Like, okay, I look ugly. But is this the time? Right. Because of what you had and what you've done, are you going to say something stupid? And this is your only opportunity Ooh. to be in proximity to Smino. Do you want to go over there and fuck it up and rap little Julio? You want to embarrass yourself? <laughs> you ask some stupid questions. Just play it cool. Just play it like, hey. <laughs> But I was so mad. And then on Twitter, I was like, dang, I see Smino. Like, I was fighting demons. She's like, you should have said something. I'm like, oh, ah! it ate me up. Man. So, that's how I felt about the internet. So, I had um, my friends sent me their posts because when I was in college in Virginia, I went to see them. Moonchild opened up and they were performing. Mm -hmm. But they had a contest going on that if you like did one of their covers to one of their songs, mm -hmm. they would let you get up on the stage and sing with them at the concert. Nobody did it for Virginia. And I had a video, I just never posted it. And I'm like, that easily could have been me. I was And I love it. I love Sid, I love Steve, Matt Martians, I love all of them. And I'm so late, like I find out way later that Steve Lacey was in the internet, like where was he yeah. at? It was so many of y'all. He was oh, on the bass, I yeah. believe. Yeah, he was on the guitar. But Sid's voice is just like so butter and so pure, yes. And she's an incredible writer, you know, for Classic Off the yes. Sofa with Beyonce. I would love that they got that Grammy nomination mm -hmm. and it's just like, Goats. Yes. Goats. They're so incredible. Such incredible musicians. That was a good list. <laughs> Those were the best we had on the show. I'm very entertained yeah. by it. So I'm definitely uh, stopping speaking up for you and Sid slash the internet. Yes. Who did something? I love that. I'm trying to get to the West Coast, okay? Yes. I'm trying wow. to get over there so I can wow. hang out with everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got to find some good black events. That's the difference. Because in Atlanta, I feel like you can go out and there's a lot of things catered to our market. I don't think that. Yeah. Like you said, Yandy has her open mind to different things. Yeah. I know there's a ton of clubs, but if you're an upcoming artist, you can come out here. In LA, it's kind of more niche because we are such a small part of the population. Mm. Like, so you're a group of people. Right. And then you got to find the stuff to go to. I heard about that. Yes. Like finding your group of people. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I didn't know it was like collectives out there yeah so yeah you gotta go to group. i wonder which one i would be a part of yeah. <laughs> because i am so versatile so it's like you can be a club and you're a talented person so it's different than like a person that is just cool you know they're for the vibes yeah or like a person that's trying to network in social climb for the sake of that right you're gonna mix in a lot easier because you do music you're very talented so it can be you know on the pickup mm. like oh she does music it's actually a good thing Oh, thanks. I appreciate yeah. that. And I would like, love to see. See if you go try it out. I feel like, and there's like a lot of popular people that have parties. Like Janelle Monet had a party series for a minute. I don't know. Then you could have gone over there. Same little sun, do a little sun. Sure. Uh, yeah. I would love to go to a Janelle Monet party. Yeah. Hey, girl. Hey, Janelle Monet. 
Who are you, Chanel? I know you just brought up Lionel Boss on tour with you, so you support new artists. Yeah, I got another one for you. Age of Pleasure. In Atlanta. Yes. <laughs> are you from Atlanta or are you from Virginia? So I'm from Detroit. But oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Where is it? What up, though? 313. But I've been in Georgia for about 11 years. Oh, wow. So I went to high school down here. So okay. I've spent basically like half my life in Michigan, half my life here. Mm-hmm. Would you get that Big Sean feature as a Detroit person? I would. Oh, I would. Cash, doll. cash doll feature. Cash doll. I, cash doll. That is my girl. Yes. Cash doll, I love you. Okay. Okay. What kind of vibe are you bringing for cash doll? Oh my gosh. I'm not going to lie. I'll create a new vibe for cash doll. <laughs> and what? I, I love you. her. I don't care. What What do you need? I got you. A what? Ever like I love her so okay. This, this will be my last because I have to ask because I love cash off too. I love her style, yes. her presentation, everything. Bomb. She is that bomb. girl, but hair across the board. Listen, Detroit women don't play about their hair. Her hair. She eats every time. Like I've never seen her with a bad hairstyle. Never. No. No, no, no. That's why when she got that high hair cover, I said nobody deserves it more. She it's deserves you. It's Queen Latifah. It's you. Yeah, for real. With the hair always on point. One hundred percent. So with Cash Doll, mm-hmm. are you gonna put her in her like emotional bag? Because sometimes Cash Doll gets vulnerable. She does. She does. Or are you gonna be like for everybody, but on the hook, like with a disrespectful hook? Mm. She's singing. I feel like I definitely would love to be on one of her like hooks mm-hmm. because I love just you know her lyrical like topics about you know being a boss like being an independent woman like i would love to like talk my talk with her one good time like i really would miss cash miss doll miss doll miss doll like i would love we will bring a present for the baby for real mr cash can have all the gifts okay I would love that. That would be so good. Detroit Girl Link Up. Yes. Okay. So, I guess to wrap it up, let's see. Ari Lachelle, if you could paint a little picture of yourself. Or no, if you could give us a TikTok video from the future mm. of you mm. five years from now. Okay. What do you want it to be like? Ooh, a TikTok of Ari Lachelle five years from now. Mm-hmm. I have a little part bust down. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> a nice neutral face beat um you know my belly will be gone i will have this super cute vibrant suit on like <laughs> classy sexy um and i would be i would be doing some sort of visual for some sort of new song that just makes me feel alive in that yes. moment okay and i would be like out now go get that Streaming on your favorite show, like <laughs> yes. So I can see that five years from now. I could. I really could. And then, do you want to be signed? Like, of course, under the right circumstances, or would you like to push it as far as you can? Independently? Oh wow, that's such a great question. I mean, I feel like, like you said, under the right circumstances, I wouldn't mind being signed, just so that I could fund myself. Like. I to have proper funding because I fund everything myself right now and I would love to have somebody else do it for, for me. real. No, that's real. <laughs> so if I got signed under the correct circumstances, I would take it. But I mean, also if I can make it shake independently too, why not? You know, I've learned the back end of things and you know, as long as I continue to get my business in order, if I could monetize my my brand off of that too, why not? Yeah. And I know we talked a lot about black men here being in power, but we both are. I know we happen to be that. Yes. If you are able to command like a certain dollar amount for your performances and for your features and for your work and all of that, and you're able to sell merch and get your music on TV shows and movies and all of that, I think it would be way more impactful that you own that stuff. And then like your family, if you choose to have children or whatever right. you want to do. That is like Ari Lachelle Incorporated. Yeah. Because, or like, you know. Ari Lachelle, baby. Yes, or some subsidiary of a label. Like I know a label give people imprints, like something like that. For sure. I feel like since you are so like musically trained and you have a lot of various experiences, you could even help like be a culture curator for other people. I don't love that. Absolutely. I feel yeah. like, you know within me finding my niche i've also learned that you know finding your niche is not always looking 
up to somebody sometimes yeah. you have to figure it out yourself because mm -hmm. if you are the first person to do certain things you know you have to figure it out along the way so yeah. I definitely wouldn't mind to you know be that person that people could look up to in regards to how do I do things in a more like you know versatile way if I have all of these things like that are within me and the best way to monetize off of them so mm -hmm. I like that. You know, we're going to stay independent as long as we can, and we're going to thug it out. But if the opportunity presented itself in a way that I felt was manageable, mm -hmm. and I would complete my contract and probably <laughs> go back independent. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. I hope when somebody sees this, they're like, oh, she said she'd go back independent. It just depends. Yeah. It all depends on the circumstances and how life plays out. Mm -hmm. But... You know, I just always do what I feel is right for me in my body. And I feel like God wouldn't present opportunities to me that, you know, with the discernment that I ask him for daily, you know, he wouldn't present something to me that wasn't for me in the time that it, in the manner that it presents itself. So I agree. Yes. All right, Michelle. And my final, final question will be, because I feel like you're so fun. <laughs> And you have Thank such you. a personality. Thank you. Would you ever be interested in acting, like TV or movie? Oh my gosh. So I did acting in high school. Okay. So, I mean, if somebody was ever like, you know, we need you to do a little one two, one two. Mm -hmm. I got it. I mean, I'll let you ask. Would you be down for a Netflix or Tubi movie? Ooh, they got oh, that check on them? You know, I would. <laughs> Listen, why not? Why not? Well, Alright, want you to be a singer in a bar. Do I, I yeah. got you? How much? How much? Mm. Like, how much? Do y'all got a wire or do y'all got like you don't gotta tell me how much? I'm just saying. Yeah. You're like, you're like yeah, I got you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just depend the, if that number is that right. Number's right. If that number's right. I'd be up in that Can we get out of wild part two? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I would be up in there. I would be in that. <laughs> Ain't that much time. Do, you hear me? Do you hear me? I'd be in it. Oh, I was Just so lit. One call is all. I would be in I don't want to. Don't play with it. Mm -mm. I'd be in there. Look, I don't, like I said, I take the dance class. <laughs> Look, I can be in that's what I'm saying. We in the here jazz him. It's the whole thing. Okay, I would definitely do that. Yeah. If acting, if somebody was like, let me see you do a little once and once and I do it for real. Okay. I it's not like I haven't did it before. Mm -hmm. So it's so funny. I was Emma Goldman in Ragtime in high school. I was okay. like a radical anarchist. I had this accent and everything, and I was just like, girl, you're so dramatic. <laughs> yeah. And I then I was Fairy Godmother in Shrek the Musical. Okay. Um, I was Aquata. I was one of Ariel's sisters in the Little Mermaid. Mm -hmm. I was Matilda in Alice in Wonderland. I was not not the Matilda. Oh my God. And I was Alice's sister in Alice in Wonderland. I always had kind of like the supporting roles or whatever, but I mean, it allowed for me to learn. So. And you got a full resume. You just ran down right now from good roles. You know, I did look <laughs> Broadway. If they call, if they call, I would do it for real. I I haven't tapped into my acting bag, but like since I've been out of college, mm -hmm. but it's always been like a love for it, you know. Okay. So I would definitely do it again. And like I work on set all the time, like on different shows mm -hmm. and stuff. So, like, why not? But Ari, she she's sick. She can't make it. We need you to come here and be teacher. Oh my gosh, no fun fact. Okay, so <laughs> fun fact. I don't think I've ever told anybody this, but when I was working on Praise This, the movie that just came out um, in April, it's starring Chloe Bailey and Chloe Huevo. Bailey and Huevo. So one day we were doing like a read through of the, um, of the script and one of the actresses, she wasn't there at the time. So, you know, the director, Miss Tina Gordon, I love her so much. She was like, are you geek up the liver? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> Shaking off the stars. I was so calm though. Like you know, I, was, I was in there reading and I was like, da -da 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 -da. like I really felt like you know, I was like, yeah, you're ready. <laughs> so look, if that would be a dead, <laughs> I would give it a try. I would. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the great art of Michelle. Oh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe this episode, leave us some comments. 
Tell us your favorite art of the show. Flip and song in the comments. Make sure you follow yes. her on TikTok. Do you have anything new coming out people should look forward to? Oh or my gosh. Wish of the year? Yes, I do have a visual coming out very soon. Okay. To a new song. Nice. So I'm very excited. Y'all just stay tuned. It'll be out before the end of the year. Okay, sure. subscribe to our show. We're going to put it above. We're in the show. Is there anything else you'd like to share before we go? Oh my gosh, just thank you so much for having me on your show. My pleasure. Have a great day. Thank you so much.